Antonio starts right now. This morning on GMSA, San Antonio Brahma's fans didn't get the result they wanted Sunday, but the city has big plans for the league in the next few months. What The Rock is saying is coming in May. Plus a bizarre story on the West Coast after a Catholic bishop is gunned down just blocks from a church. What authorities are saying in your morning headlines. And outside with LiCam this morning, it looks like we've got some low clouds. Wouldn't be surprised at a hint of fog or two. 61 degrees. Mike's full forecast is coming up on this President's Day. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, February 20th. Happy President's Day. A lot of folks had the day off today, had through a full three-day weekend. Must be nice. We're here. We are here. And Steph's we... back tomorrow, but Sarah, I'm glad you're here this morning. I'm, it's always nice to be with you two gentlemen. Oh, Thanks. you're very sweet. She's very sweet, very gracious. Uh, yes, so indeed. what's happening with the weather? Because yesterday was stunning. Yeah. Saturday was stunning as well. Nice and cold Saturday morning. Pretty chilly yesterday, and now it's a whole different story. It seems like that's been the trend the past couple of weeks. We've had these great weekends, and then all of a sudden the humidity comes back in here, as well as the warmth. And get used to things being warm, or I should say hot, because it's going to feel like summer this week. This morning, yes, it feels like there wants to be some fog. Got that uh, mention of it in the forecast. I haven't seen anything as of yet, but just be on the lookout out for that. Temperatures are in the 50s and 60s as of right now, and these numbers, dew points, measure of moisture in the atmosphere, have really started to come back up, and so that's why there is the threat for some fog in the next couple of hours around here. Mold is on the low side, and as far as the rest of today, we're going to make it up to 70 at noon, 78 for a high temperature. A lot of clouds hanging around here, some of that patchy fog this morning, and most of the cloudy skies by noon, 78, and like I said, high temperature, partly cloudy skies and you think that's hot just wait till you see what the forecast is over the next couple of days big question is any rain in sight details coming up in just a couple of minutes Sarah Mark Mike thank you topic in morning headlines a mystery surrounding the murder of a Catholic Bishop in Los Angeles as ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports authorities are trying to determine who shot the Bishop inside his home and why Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. A prayer vigil was held outside the crime scene in the L.A. suburb of Hacienda Heights, where police say 69-year-old Auxiliary Bishop David O'Connell was found shot in the chest inside his own house in the middle of the afternoon. O'Connell, a priest and bishop for 45 years, was described as a peacemaker who worked with everyone from immigrants to victims of gang violence. Those who knew him say they're stunned. He was so soft-spoken. He was a humble soul. He was not the type that would have confrontations with nobody. The sheriff's department released few details, only saying they've ruled out suicide, but so far no information on possible suspects or a motive. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. I can hear you. Okay, uh, we're back, folks. In some other headlines, five people were shot during the crew of Bacchus Mardi Gras parade in New Orleans last night. One adult was killed but has not been identified. Three others and a child are in stable condition and being treated at a local hospital. Police say one person is detained and two guns were found at the scene. It's unclear what led to that shooting. Police in Memphis, Tennessee are investigating two separate shootings that detectives believe are connected. 11 people were shot Sunday. One man died and five others were critically injured. Memphis police say seven people were shot at a nightclub just before 1 a.m., but the violence didn't stop there. Less than two miles away, four people were shot at an intersection. So far, police say there's, there's three suspects, but no one is in custody. A freak accident at a water park in East Rutherford, New Jersey, left eight people hurt a helicopter hanging on the inside of DreamWorks Water Park, fell from the ceiling and landed in the pool below. Paramedics took one of the eight people hurt to a hospital for treatment. The others were not seriously hurt. The water park will remain closed until later today. An actor and comedian Richard Belzer has died. The Hollywood Reporter says a 78-year-old died at his home in France. He began stand-up comedy in the 70s before roles on TV and film. He's best remembered as Detective John Munch on TV show Homicide, Life on the Street, and then later on Law and Order Special Victims Unit. 434, 61 degrees. So to come later on this morning on GMSA, we'll hear from The Rock and get his take on opening weekend of the XFL and why San Antonio is a big ingredient to what he's cooking. Plus, it may not be the result that uh, fans of the Brahmas wanted, but they put on a show in front of a loud home crowd at the Dome. We've got highlights and reaction from players next. 
I was driving around the dome yesterday during the big game, and there was a lot of traffic there. And looks like we have an incident at Loop 410 in Northwest Military. We'll have the latest on that. Stephen popped his head in just a few minutes ago. That's at eastbound 410 at Jackson Keller. All right. All right. And then Mike will have our forecast when we come back. It was loud down there at field level. Danny Garcia and the Rock announcing before the Brahmas game Sunday the XFL championship will be here in San Antonio on May 13th. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. San Antonio could smell what the Rock was cooking when the Brahmas hosted the St. Louis Battlehawks for their season opener in the Alamo Dome this weekend. The game tied at three all halftime. Fourth quarter, Brahmas leading 6-3. Get our first touchdown of the game. Jack Cohn throws to Fred Brown and the Brahmas lead 12-3. The one-point conversion play was no good. They go up 15-3 before the Battlehawks battle back. Former NFL quarterback A.J. McCarron finds Hakeem Butler for an 18-yard score and six points. Battlehawks go for a three-point play from the 10, and McCarron to Austin Prohl threads the needle, and it's good. St. Louis is down 15-12. Next play, they convert a fourth and 15 from the Brahmas 25, and instead of an onside kick, which allowed them to keep the ball, St. Louis would march down the field and take the lead. McCarron to Prohl, 14 yards for the final points of the game. St. Louis comes back to stun the Brahmas, 18 to 15. Disappointing loss, you know. Uh, I know our players was in the locker room, but, uh, you know, it's just one game. You know, I, I've lost the Super Bowl before. That, that hurts. So uh, this is uh, one game, start of the season. Um, you know, hats off to St. Louis, uh, fighting all throughout the game. And, and then, like, the last three minutes, man, they just they made plays. They made more plays than we did. It was pretty crazy. I mean, I'd say, you know, you get to that point in the game, in a normal NFL game, college game, you think the game's pretty much over. But with the new rules, the game's a lot more exciting. And I think that's the way it should be. Um, so, yeah, we just got to get used to these new rules and uh, finish the game out strong. San Antonio did a heck of a job. Um, you know, I played here in 19. We opened up in San Antonio for the AAF, and it was loud as hell, too. Uh, it was an excellent environment. I thought it was a, it's been a great weekend for the XFL. It's been really good, close, competitive games for the most part. And, uh, you know, why not, you know, throw one on Sunday for us and have a game like this? I mean, you got everything. It was so much fun to watch, especially with those rules changes. Exciting stuff, All right? Looking ahead, Brahma's hit the road this next week and play at the Orlando Guardians next Sunday at 3 p.m. You can watch that game live on ESPN. Then they'll be on the road for three more weeks before they come back to the Dome for the next home game on March the 19th. I loved seeing how many people turned out for that game. And they kept talking about how loud it was. Can you imagine the idea of not only filling the lower bowl, but the upper bowl part of the Alamo Dome too one day. We can totally do it here in San Antonio. Let's consider it a goal. <laughs> All right, 441, 61 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, Marvel's latest movie has fans flocking to theaters for Quantumania. How Ant-Man set the bar high for movies this year. And today is actually one of the top 10 busiest shopping days of the year. We'll explain why in your GMA First Look. Looking ahead, consumers can expect to see some of the biggest savings of the year today on President's Day. ABC's Janae Norman has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, ready, set, shop. The President's Day deep discounts start now. President's Day is great for those bigger ticket items, especially those for the home. So think mattresses, large appliances. And this year's mattress deals are what savings dreams are made of. Casper offering up to 25% off their entire mattress line. Helix offering the same, plus two free pillows. And while President's Day sales are typically known for mattresses, many now crossing into other categories like tech. If consumers are looking for other things like tech, for example, you should definitely look. Um, I did get a notification from a deal site the other day saying that Lenovo was having up to 81% off on PCs. And we'll have all the sales you don't want to miss coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Janae Norman, ABC News, New York.
Hey, we have a better vantage point now of what appears to be a major crash now. More information now coming into our newsroom. You're looking live right now. This is eastbound 410 at Jackson Keller. And uh, Katrina Weber has got some more information as well. As well, That's right. It's happening in the eastbound loop of 410 near Blanco Military Castle Hills exit. Police say a man was hit while trying to cross the highway. She's going to have a report coming up for us. That's right. In just we, a bit. We understand this is now a fatality accident, and uh, the initial information is that the driver who struck the pedestrian did not stop to render aid. So right now, one lane is closed eastbound 410, but it looks like they're slowing everybody down and making them merge far to the left. Maybe a couple more lanes than it appears. Trans guy folks just zoomed out a little bit to show the back up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, right. So, so now it's a fatality. So that's obviously those take a while to investigate. So Steve will have more coming up at the top of the hour. Yesterday was a beautiful day. Fantastic. Did something I haven't done in. I can't remember the last time. Cut the grass. Yeah, because I mean it's been so dry, and we finally had a little bit of rain. And it was growing. It was like, oh, good lord! I mean, you know, you don't look at it. And it was real tall, but yeah, it's nice. So hopefully. Uh, well, I shouldn't say hopefully because rain is not really in the in the offing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hopefully we'd get some rain. Uh, that's not going to be the situation this week. It's going to be hot this week, though. That's one thing. You know, after down near freezing Saturday morning, yesterday was down in the 40s. Now it's going to be yeah, almost like summer this week. Some wispy clouds. Yeah, made for a great sunset yesterday. Beautiful end of the weekend. Beautiful picture there over by Woodlawn Lake. Thank you very much for that. And you can see we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. 60 degrees in town. 61 Bernie stage. Some low 50s in the hill country. Way, way above normal. Normal low temperatures in the mid 40s right now. And of course, we've got a bunch of humidity. <clears throat> Excuse me. And dew point temperatures are up a good 10, 15, 20 degrees compared to this time yesterday. And that humidity is just going to continue to come back on in here. And that's why we are seeing a couple of patches of fog right here, maybe around Seguin, there in eastern uh, Guadalupe County, and then further off to the east, more fog. And some of this is going to continue to try and develop just because we got all this humidity around here, not much of a breeze. The clouds are going to help out somewhat but still be on the lookout for a couple of patches of fog. Temperatures will stay basically steady. Maybe that 10%, a little bit of mist if there is any fog out there. And then we'll see some sunshine later on, make it up into the low 70s at noon and then top off at 78 later on today. So we are going to be 10 degrees above normal. Now, as far as cloud cover, we do have a lot of moisture aloft in the atmosphere. And that's been the situation over the weekend. We had, you know, a little bit of maybe some high cloudiness out there, uh, perhaps a veiled, kind of veiled, milky look to the sky. And a lot of high clouds going to be sticking around here for the next few days. Now, it's going to stay very warm and humid today, tomorrow. We have a front moving through here. This is only a dry line front. Yes, it is going to knock dew points down and the humidity is going to get out of here temporarily. It's going to come right back in here very quickly. But with that drier air moving on in here, that's just going to allow temperatures to surge on Wednesday. And Wednesday, we are going to be seeing a lot of readings, believe it or not, up into the 90s. 70 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies still, and then a high temperature is going to make it up to 78, partly cloudy skies. Enough humidity out there, you're going to notice it. Same thing tomorrow. We'll start off a little bit of patchy fog around the area and then make it up even hotter, mid 80s. Front comes through, like I said, with some of that drier air trying to move on in here. That's just going to allow temperatures, because drier heats up a lot more easily, up or 80s on Wednesday. A lot of 90s out there. Gee, not as hot the rest of the week. Still, I mean, the cold day, if you will, is Friday, 75. It, it, it feels like spring is here. I know yeah. all my plants think spring is here, yeah. uh, but I know Sarah was saying we still have to wait. Like, you know, the last two weeks, you know, last year we had that freeze like the second week in March. Mm -hmm. So I can't think back just say the, spring is here yet. The infamous 1996 started with a freeze, hit 100 on the 21st, tomorrow's that anniversary, and ended with a freeze, starting off there, ending the month of uh, February and March. So. Yeah. So it, to sum it up, if you're thinking about buying a bunch of flowers and plants, maybe to wait just a little bit longer. Always wait. Look at the first week of March, see what's going to happen, and then maybe. She's the green thumb. Listen, to her. <laughs> we're, we're we, we trust Sarah about this. 449, 61 degrees. Up next, Ant-Man made a splash in theaters this weekend. We'll check out the latest Marvel movie, plus the latest in Hollywood in your morning spotlight.
A lot of numbers this morning. Pick three, 412, Fireball 1, Daily 4, 6273, Fireball 0. Cash 5, 3, 4, 20, 33, 35, Texas Lotto, 3, 4, 31, 34, 41, 48. And let's look at the Powerball numbers, 821, 31, 32, 37, Powerball 23, Power Play 4. like a satellite for deep space, but quanta. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania scored an estimated $104 million at the domestic box office in its opening weekend. The movie kicked off phase five of the Marvel Cinematic Universe franchise. It's a secret universe beneath ours. Quantumania's domestic haul is nearly double what the first standalone Ant-Man film opened with in 2015 and marks the 31st consecutive Marvel release to debut at number one. Tom Sizemore, the actor known for his roles in Saving Private Ryan and Black Hawk Down, has been hospitalized in critical condition after suffering a brain aneurysm at his Los Angeles home early Saturday. His manager described his condition as a wait-and-see situation. This Is Us star Milo Ventimiglia is returning to television, this time in ABC's The Company You Keep. Put a little too much mustard on that one, Pop. Ventimiglia plays a con artist who might be falling for a CIA agent, played by Katherine Haina Kim. The show debuted Sunday night and will be streaming on Hulu. And happy birthday to Rihanna, the singer who just performed at this year's Super Bowl halftime show while pregnant with her second child. She's 35. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Chuck Sievertson, ABC News. It's 455 and 61 degrees. Up next at 5, it's been almost a year since Russia invaded Ukraine and President Biden has made a surprise visit to Kyiv before a high-stakes trip involving what comes next for Europe. Plus, we'll check in with The Rock and his plans for the XFL and how San Antonio fits into the league's future. And ahead on GMS 86, San Antonio's Ready to Work program, seeing a lot of participants. We'll hear from one who speaks about his time in the program and his message to others looking for work. And Stephen Cavasso just walked in. We're going to have an update from him of this deadly crash happening on Loop 410 eastbound lanes near Blanco and Military Castle Hills exit, causing a big backup early this morning. Our Katrina Weber also on scene will have the latest when we come back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. President Biden is set to travel to Poland amid new warnings to China not to send lethal assistance to Russia for the war in Ukraine. That and the latest in the war coming up. Back here at home, San Antonio police are searching for a suspect in the stabbing at Kennedy Park. What we've been able to learn next. Outside with light cam this morning, some low clouds out there and temperatures in the lower 60s. We'll talk to Mike in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, February 20th, and we begin with developing news in the Castle Hills area. That's right. We're going to toss right over to Stephen Cavazos, who has the latest. Good morning, Stephen. Yeah, that's right. Mark's here. Unfortunately, things are not looking good out here. We have a shot at 410 at Jackson Keller. Back to back traffic. We have multiple lanes that are shut down right now. Really, only one lane of traffic is getting through, and that's because we have a deadly Envy pad that we mentioned a little bit earlier. We are still working to gather some information, but Katrina Weber will have a live report in just a moment. But let's talk about what we're seeing out here in terms of that traffic, because at 5 a.m., uh, typically we don't see shots like this, and that's a pretty busy spot right there along Loop 410. So a lot of folks will have some difficulty navigating their way through this. You see multiple first responders out there on the scene with several road flares blocked off. And again, right now, traffic just down to one lane right now, which is why we are seeing several vehicles that are back to back. Just not a good situation right now. Let's get you to the map because where we see that MV ped reported by TxDOT was right here along Loop 410 eastbound at Jackson Keller. We have a buildup right there in traffic moving at just 15 miles per hour. So uh, not a good area to have an issue this morning, but we are going to watch it closely. This MV ped is reported around 415. And again, Katrina Weber, who is live there now. Katrina, this is a mess on the road. As you can see it right behind you. What else are we learning right now? Yeah, it doesn't look much better here on the ground. Uh, did talk to police, Castle Hills Police. They confirmed that a man was hit and killed here on the main lanes of the highway. Just uh, look at what's going on here behind me. Traffic moved over to that middle lane as police, firefighters, and also hero uh, works in this area. Now, just beyond the ambulance, there is uh, what appears to be a body on the ground, the body of a man covered by a tarp. 
Police tell us that that man was trying to cross the highway for some reason and was hit by a car. They say that the car did stop, and we can see it stopped. It's way past here. It's probably 100 yards down the road, but the driver did stop and try to help the man who was hit, but there was nothing that he or anyone else could do because that person who was hit was killed. So police here are working the scene. They said they're calling in detectives to come and investigate this accident, but in the meantime, it is causing quite a mess here. These are the eastbound lanes of 410 near the Blanco, uh, so Castle Hills exit. This is where it's all going down. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. Of course, she's going to keep us updated all morning long, as will Stephen. All right, step outside this morning. Katrina's got a light jacket on. We're at 60 degrees. It's not really, really cold. Not as cold as what it was yesterday morning, no, nor Saturday morning. And that bottom number, dew point, has definitely come up. So we got a lot more humidity out there, a lot of clouds, and then it is going to be warm, downright hot today, upper 70s, and that's just the start of basically a heat wave the first part of the week. The aquifer yesterday went up three tenths of a foot and the allergens got a whole laundry list of them. I think that's why my voice sounds like it does with all the ash, elm, hackberry mold out there this morning. And uh, as far as fog, we are seeing little hints here and there. Nothing in and around the metropolitan area right now. Over there by Gonzales, reporting seven miles visibility. And then further off to the south and east, Beeville, Victoria, right there along the coastal plain where you would usually see some of this fog. So we just need to be on the lookout for some of this to try and form up. There was a little bit in and around Seguin earlier this morning. And just with the humidity out there, we got some of the ingredients in place. Once again, a laundry list of all the uh, allergens out there this morning. So warm, humid clouds, some fog, and then partly cloudy, upper 70s, as I mentioned. Then tomorrow, fog in the morning, we're going to be up into the mid 80s and we're not done heating up as of yet. 90, close to it. We're going for the upper 80s here in town, but a lot of 90s on Wednesday and then cooler. Uh, just 80s, maybe even a couple of 70s out there, but still well above normal throughout the rest of the week and even going into the weekend. Can we squeeze out a shower here or there? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. Mike, thank you very much. Happening today, President Joe Biden made a surprise visit to Ukraine ahead of the one, an one year anniversary of Russia's invasion. The trip also includes high stakes trip to Poland. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is telling China not to provide any lethal military support to Russia for their war. ABC's M. Wynn has more this morning from Washington. This morning, President Biden prepares to head to Europe, set to meet with Poland's president ahead of delivering remarks Tuesday to mark the one year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The White House saying the president will make clear the U.S. will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. The president's high stakes trip coming amid a new stark warning to China. We have information that gives us concern that they are considering providing lethal support to Russia. In, uh, in the war against Ukraine. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken meeting with his Chinese counterpart this weekend. It was important for me to share very clearly with, with Wang Yi uh, that this would be a serious problem. Senator Lindsey Graham also cautioning Beijing not to cross the line, calling it the most catastrophic thing that could happen to U.S.-China relations. This as Ukraine presses for more weapons from the West, including F-16 fighter jets. Graham calling on the U.S. to hand them over and start training Ukrainian pilots, though it could represent a major escalation of U.S. support in the war. Don't worry about provoking Putin. Let's make sure we beat Putin in Ukraine. In the eastern city of Bakhmut, an area that has seen months of brutal Russian attacks, Ukrainian defenses resisting Russian forces, which have been weakening due to equipment shortages. Troy Offenbecker, a former American Marine there, now fighting for Ukraine as a volunteer. So it's been pretty bad on the ground. A lot of casualties. Ukrainian President Zelensky saying his military is already preparing for the next counterattack in the western part of the Donetsk province. China pointing to the U.S. for continuously providing weapons on the battlefield, saying the U.S. is not qualified to issue orders to China. Meanwhile, Ukrainian intelligence officials are accusing Russia of planning to stage large-scale nuclear exercises while President Biden visits Europe this week. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home this morning, San Antonio police are still looking for a suspect in connection with a stabbing at Kennedy Park. Happened just before noon Sunday at the park on General McMullen near Couples Road and Highway 90. When police arrived on scene, they found a man stabbed in the torso. He was taken to a hospital. 
Police are asking for any information that could lead them to a suspect. Well, this morning, San Antonio has unveiled plans for the $2.5 billion airport project. Big news last week. So on top of the beautification aspect, what could all of this mean for our economy? As Max Massey reports, President and CEO of Greater SATX, Jenna Sacedo Herrera, joined us yesterday on Leading SA to explain our bright future. Yes, Jenna joined us and we talked about a lot. We talked about the opportunity for more non-stop service from San Antonio to other parts of the country. We talked about the optimism of having more than 20 million people coming through San Antonio International Airport. And we talked about investing in not only our people here in San Antonio, but of course our places. Take a listen to some of our conversation. This is a top priority for existing businesses here in San Antonio, but also potential new businesses that we're working to recruit. And so as we continue to invest big in SAT, we'll continue to see real results. But it's all about that nonstop service capacity uh, and also, you know, creating a more inviting welcome for visitors that are coming to the San Antonio community. But to put it into perspective, you know, the airport travels about 10 million passengers per year, and we're aiming to double that over the next couple of decades. So investing the 2.5 billion, a little bit higher than that actually, uh, sends the world a strong signal that San Antonio is ready for growth. We also discussed San Antonio's plan for job retention and job recruitment. You can check out our full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. For GMSA, I'm Max Massey. Back to you guys. Thank you, Max. It's 506 and 61 degrees. Well, still to come at 5, Elon Musk testing out a new satellite internet service that could connect almost anywhere in the world. Why, you could, it, why it could cost you a lot to sign up. And up next, we'll hear from The Rock and Danny Garcia on why they picked San Antonio to host the first XFL title game at the Alamo Dome. If your travels take you along Loop 410, headed towards, say, San Antonio International Airport, we've got big problems right now due to a fatality incident involving a motor vehicle and a pedestrian. Can we pop that up real quick? Uh, 410 at Jackson Keller. Big backups. If we can't, uh, Stephen will show you more coming up later in this newscast. It's been warmer temps and we're going to look have a warmer week. 61 degrees at 507. Mike will have our forecast when we come back. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. XFL co-owners Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Danny Garcia, and Jerry Cardinale were at the Alamo Dome Sunday for the Brahma's big game. Before kickoff, they walked onto the field to a huge ovation. Plenty of people were there to see him, and they did not leave disappointed. And just before kickoff, Danny and Dwayne announced the XFL championship game will be here at the Dome Saturday, May 13th on KSAT 12. And during a second corner interview, we asked them why they picked San Antonio. We could just see the momentum building as these ticket sales were going and going. And this was this was phenomenal. Um, we couldn't be more excited. This was a huge decision for us to bring a team to San Antonio. Jerry was so passionate about it. We did a tremendous amount of research and just wanted to connect to the city. And the city has come out in a massive way. I mean, there was, you know, early on when we were looking at all these cities and what makes sense, what markets make sense. And San Antonio was always very high on the list. And I, I luckily, fortunately, Danny and I, I started my career here in San Antonio back when I was wrestling and um, it helped shape me as a rookie just two months as a professional wrestler. I came right here to the Alamo Dome and this is a tough place to come into and so I have really fond memories and what Danny and I talked about earlier when we shared this with Jerry was I think if we create the right story and the right team, I think the city is really going to be hungry and passionate for it. And as Danny was saying, you just start to see the ticket sales come up and to see almost, I think, 20,000 people here tonight. It's very special. All right, San Antonio did lose their home opener. In case you missed it, Brahma's hit the road this next weekend to play at Orlando versus the Guardians. That's next Sunday at 3 o'clock. You can watch it live on ESPN. They come back to the Dome for the next home game on March the 19th. It's 512 and 61 degrees. Coming up before 530, some major movie awards were handed out over the weekend. Uh, your favorite flicks did as award season rolls towards the Oscars. And the company behind Facebook and Instagram is testing a new service that could get your account verified for a price. And again, this is the big incident we're tracking this morning. A person was struck and killed by a vehicle. This is affecting lanes at eastbound 410 right there at the Castle Hills Northwest Military Highway exit. We'll be right back. You know why people are always looking at their phones? They're thinking. 
with Bank of America. See cousin Jimmy over there? His girlfriend just caught the bouquet, so you might need a little more help saving for that engagement ring. The groom's parents? You think they're looking at photos of their handsome boy. They're not. She just saw how much they spent on ballroom dance classes. Won't be needing those anymore. Digital tools so impressive, you just can't stop banking. What would you like the power to do? My secret to beating sniff chicks? Secret dry spray. Just spray and stay fresh all day. My turn. <laughs> secret actually fights odor and it's aluminum free. Hours later, still fresh. Secret works. Your shipping manager left to find themselves, leaving you lost. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. Just about 516 this morning, Meta is testing a new subscription for Facebook and Instagram. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a change is coming to Instagram and Facebook. Users will soon need to pay if they want to become a verified account. CEO Mark Zuckerberg says the new subscription service is aimed at improving security. For $11.99 a month, you'll get a blue verified badge and direct access to customer support. The program launches in the U.S. later this year. And Twitter will soon charge users for two-factor authentication. After March 20th, that extra layer of security using text messages will go away unless you're a Twitter Blue subscriber. Finally, Starlink is testing a new satellite internet service. The SpaceX-owned company says its global roaming service will let users connect from almost anywhere on land in the world for about $200 a month. I had a joke to tell about a satellite, but you know what? It'll never land. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 516 on your Monday morning. And it's rare that we have big backups this right. early in the morning does happen from time to time. It, it does, and we were really hoping maybe today, because it's President's Day, a lot of folks would be staying home, right. but unfortunately the commute has just picked up and not in a good way. Let's get a shot there at 410, right there at Jackson Keller. Unfortunately, as we reported earlier, we have a, a situation where unfortunately a man was struck by a vehicle and killed out there along Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Again, not a good situation right now, and this has led to big backups there along 410 eastbound, and you can see that traffic really has not moved at all, and we have first response that have shut down most of the lanes out there. Really, only one lane is open at this time. So this is going to lead to some big backups. If you plan on heading to the airport or maybe just even somewhere along Jackson Keller, make sure to plan ahead. I do have a solution for you coming up, but let's take a look at that backup and how fast traffic is moving because pretty much it stayed the same. Right now, 14 miles per hour along Loop 410 eastbound at Jackson Keller Road, and that's where that deadly MV pad was reported. We're going to continue to watch that area closely, but it doesn't look like we'll see a good update here in the, in the next few minutes or so, but a solution here temporary for right now. You can exit Vance Jackson Road and then turn left at Saxon left at West Avenue. If you're just trying to get to Jackson Keller, I've outlined there for you in the blue and you can see that may be the quickest route to get to Jackson Keller at this time. So just plan your commute ahead of time if you plan on traveling along Loop 410. But while we're at it, let's give you a wide look at the metropolitan area. Thankfully, no other issues to report at this time. It's still very quiet. We do have some active construction. We have more on that a little bit later on in this newscast. But for right now, the big headline on the roadway will be there along Loop 410 at Jackson Keller near Castle Hills. We'll watch it closely, but scan this QR code that is coming up on your screen right now. That gives you all the latest updates on closures, but also any other incidents that may impact your commute, like what we're seeing along Loop 410. So again, plan your commute ahead of time. Arrive alive, Mike. Yeah, that's not a good spot to find not an easy all. way around. No that area, even like just taking Hildebrand, trying to get around there. Yeah. So, all right, thank you very much, Stephen. You know, we were talking about how it's going to feel like spring and maybe some of the plants are getting fooled by that. Look at there. Got a couple of blue bonnets that are showing up already. And I'll tell you one thing, a lot of plants are going to be thinking it's spring already and even summer this week with these temperatures. Got a lot of clouds around here right now and visibility, <clears throat> no problem. A little bit of fog over there around Gonzales, but in and around the metropolitan area, we're not seeing anything as of yet. A lot more down here to the southeast, Beeville, Victoria, uh, LaGrange, Gonzales, just hints of it. So just be on the lookout because we've got some of the ingredients in place to see some patchy fog around here this morning. If there is some fog, there may be a couple of damp spots on the roads. Not forecasting anything will real widespread as far as fog, but again, just be on the lookout for a patch or two. Temperatures are going to be staying in the mid 50s this morning and we'll make it up to 70 at noon. Some sunshine will start to squeeze through a bit more 
still a lot of those high clouds out there later on today, and we're going to make it up to 78 for high temperature this afternoon, and you ain't seen nothing yet as far as temperatures. Here's the uh, satellite picture right now, and you can see this. It's kind of hard to see, but this darker shade of gray right there, some of those low clouds hanging on in here. And one thing to take note of, first of all, yes, there is some very cold weather up there to the north, and no, that is not coming down in our direction. The other thing is, see that circulation right there off Baja, and then these clouds coming on in here, the stream of moisture, that's what's going to be sticking around for the next couple of days as far as keeping a lot of clouds around here, a lot of those high clouds. That's why kind of partly cloudy skies each and every day. Also, temperatures average is 69. We're going to be 20 above that basically by Wednesday. A lot of 90s out there, especially down along the Rio Grande Valley and counterintuitive. This is right in behind. Pardon me. We've got a little bit of a bad frame here on this wall right in behind a front that's going to move through here, but it's a dry line. So that's just going to knock temp knock dew points down and that heats up. Drier air heats up a lot more quickly. Not as hot to finish up the work week, but still going to be on the warm side and uh, low temperatures. Look at that 20 degrees above normal all the way across the week. So forecast today, we are going to be seeing temperatures. Can we just kind of take these graphics full just to get rid of that? Thank you very much. Uh, 70 mostly cloudy skies at noon and then high temperature today is going to make it up to 78 degrees, partly cloudy skies and continue continues the warm up. So yeah, those blue bonnets we saw, maybe you've seen a whole bunch more of those. Front moves through Tuesday into Wednesday. Again, it's only a dry line, so drier air heats up more easily, and that's why upper 80s on Wednesday and then Ooh, big cool down Friday. <laughs> Noticeable warming trend, both mornings and evenings though, for sure. Everything way, way above normal this time mm -hmm. of year. I mean, it 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 has been nice to be outside, but then also oh, yeah. Kind of like, oh, I don't really want to get warm. It's only Feb. Then I remember it's only February. <laughs> I agree with you wholeheartedly. We're saying we have trust issues with Mother Nature, and that's okay. A little. 522, 61 degrees. After the break, as we inch closer to the Oscars, we're getting an idea of who the real movie contenders are. That's next in your morning spotlight. Here are your lottery numbers again. Pick three numbers, 412, Fireball 1. Daily four numbers, 6273, Fireball 0. Bless you, Mike. Cash 5, 3, 4, 20, 33, 35. Texas Lotto, 3, 4, 31, 38, 41, 48. Powerball, 8, 21, 31, 32, 37. Powerball 23, Power Play 4. In your morning spotlight, major movie awards were handed out this weekend on both sides of the Atlantic. CNN's David Daniel has the highlights in today's Hollywood Minute. All quiet on the Western Front made a lot of noise at the BAFTA Film Awards, England's biggest night in film. The German World War II drama led the way Sunday with seven awards, including Best Film and Best Director, as well as Adapted Screenplay and Original Score. Call him Sonny Larry. In June, he used to be the best of friends. We're still the best of friends. No, you're not. The Banshees of Inna Sharon picked up four BAFTAs, including Supporting Actor for Barry Keoghan and Supporting Actress for Kerry Condon. Lead acting honors went to Kate Blanchett for Tar and Austin Butler for Elvis, which also received costume design and makeup and hair awards. All Quiet on the Western Front was amazing. Really? Stunning cinematography, most violent war movie I've seen since Saving Private Ryan. Okay, I'll have to check it out. 526, 61 degrees. Coming up at 530, residents of East Palestine, Ohio are skeptical if the area is safe after a train carrying toxic chemicals derailed. Plus, if you're in the market for a used car, prices are rising again. We'll tell you how much it's gone up just in the last two weeks. And up next, winter is almost over, so travelers are getting ready for spring break. How you can get the best deals before 6 a.m. And ahead on GMSA at 6, recall skyrocketed last year with millions of items off the shelf that can cause some trouble for consumers. We'll tell you what sites you can visit to help keep track if any of the items you have now are on those recall lists. One of the big stories we're tracking this morning with Stephen Cavazos is a deadly incident involving a pedestrian on Loop 410. This is eastbound at Jackson Keller. Huge stacking in that area. All four lanes are having to merge down to one lane on the left side. We are tracking this incident. We'll have more coming up in this newscast. 
We had a warm weekend and it looks like it's going to be a warm President's Day, 61 degrees at 530. Mike will have our spring like forecast for this week in just a bit. It is President's Day. Good morning, Monday, February 20th. Happy President's Day, but we're going to get right to Stephen Cavazos with the latest on that deadly crash, Stephen. Yeah, that's right, Mark, Sarah. Now, remember, this was uh, reported a little bit earlier this morning, but let's get a wider look at TransGuide and see what the situation is looking like at this time. You can see back to back traffic out there. Now, remember, uh, we did hear from police uh, and Katrina Weber a little bit earlier who reported that a man was hit by a vehicle while trying to cross Loop 410. This is in the eastbound lanes. Now, unfortunately, that man did die on the scene. The driver did stop to render aid, but this has led to a big backup of as the investigation does continue out there. Multiple first responders on the scene. And in fact, right now it does look like one lane of traffic is open, but uh, really about four lanes there is where we're seeing just back to back bumper to bumper traffic and not a good situation because if you're trying to head to the airport along Loop 410 eastbound, you will find this delay there. Let's get you to the map because not much has changed. Unfortunately, there in the last few minutes, 410 eastbound at Jackson Keller is where tech stop reported that incident earlier this morning and traffic has maintained the same speed about 14 miles per hour there. So we're going to see that likely continue up until 6 a.m. These investigations do take a while, so you have to pack your patients, look for those alternative routes. I'll be combing through different solutions for you throughout the morning until as long as the scene is active. While we're at it, let's give you a wide look at the metropolitan area because thankfully that is the only major headline on the roadways. Other than that, things are quiet. We will have active construction that we'll get to a little bit later on today, but right now the big problem will be there along Loop 410. Travel times, if you plan on heading into San Antonio, let's get you to some travel times here because thankfully there is still some green coming in from Seguin, 29 minutes along I-10 westbound, about 33 minutes if you're traveling along 87 northbound heading in from Lavernia. And for our friends in Floresville, it looks to be about 28 minutes to the Alamo City. But again, big problem here along Loop 410 at Jackson Keller back here in town. We'll continue to monitor this closely, but hoping for a better update before morning rush does kick in. But the good news here is, Mike, is hopefully we won't see a lot of folks out there because it is President's Day. A lot of folks may have the day off. Still, it's amazing to see how many folks are out that early and that backup out there. Thank you very much, Stephen. So a lot of clouds hanging around here right now. It was an absolutely spectacular weekend. Nice chilly mornings the past couple of mornings. Downright cold Saturday. Now look at this. We're at 61. Dew point humidity is way up there as well. That has gone up to 54 and we have a little bit of a breeze. And what we're going to have to be on the lookout for, even though we're not seeing a lot right now, is some patchy fog. There was some earlier reported around Seguin as well as Gonzalez. Gonzalez is now at 10 miles visibility. More down here along the coastal plain. Again, just kind of be on the look out for that as we go in for the next couple of hours. Mold, ash, elm, hackberry, just a laundry list of spring allergens out there. That's probably because it feels like spring and it's going to feel like spring and even summer as we go on through the rest of the week. 70 at noon. A lot of clouds hanging around here this morning and we'll make it up to 78 later on today. Partly cloudy skies and enough humidity to where you're going to be noticing it. It's going to get even hotter tomorrow, even hotter on Wednesday. Will that be the trend the rest of the week? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. Thank you, Mike. In your morning headlines, President Biden has made an unannounced visit to Ukraine, arriving in Kyiv as the United States signals its ongoing support against Russia's invasion. Biden's visit comes ahead of a planned meeting with NATO allies in Poland. He's scheduled on Tuesday evening to give a speech at Royal Castle Arcades in Warsaw to mark one year since Russia's invasion. That video just into our newsroom of the visit between President Zelensky and President Biden. All right, over in Ohio, back here in the U.S., Norfolk Southern officials say the company is working with state environmental and health agencies to respond to the environmental crisis caused by that train derailment in East Palestine back on February 3rd. So while officials say the air and water are safe in the area, some residents say they're still concerned about potential health hazards caused by that crash. John Lawrence reports. Just over two weeks have passed since a Norfolk Southern train derailed and dumped toxic materials near East Palestine, Ohio but the aftermath lingers on. Watch what happens when they, when they disturb the waterbed. Look at these chemicals, look at those colors. The chemicals, and it has kind of a butane smell to it. On Sunday, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg sent a letter to Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw demanding accountability, adding that the people of East Palestine cannot be forgotten, nor can their pain be simply considered the cost of doing business. We worked with the Ohio EPA on safe operations and safety for the community. 
Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw also says all air and municipal water tests have come back clean, but some people should still drink bottled water. Private well testing, we need to continue to, to monitor and test the wells and wait for those, tells, those test results to come back. Some residents say they are suffering from ailments like headaches and sore throats since the derailment. After those symptoms, I also noticed that I have this rash on my arm that was not there before I came here. Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown says he understands why people in the affected areas are skeptical and concerned. They know that, that corporate lobbyists have had far too much influence in our government uh, and they see this as the result and this kind of thing shouldn't happen. I'm John Lawrence reporting. In other news this morning, five people were shot during the crew of Bacchus Mardi Gras parade in New Orleans last night. One adult was killed but has not been identified. Three others and a child are in stable condition are being treated at a New Orleans area hospital. Police say one person has been detained and two guns were found at the scene. It's unclear what led to that shooting. A freak accident at a water park in East Weatherford, New Jersey, left eight people injured. A decorative helicopter inside the DreamWorks water park fell from the ceiling and landed in the pool below. Paramedics took one of the eight people hurt to the hospital for treatment. The others were not seriously injured. The water park will remain closed until later today. 536, 62 degrees. Still ahead, two lawmakers in Washington want states to bring back employees who were fired for not getting vaccinated. And winter is winding down, so travelers are getting ready for spring break. How you can get the best deals, a, a technique called booking backwards. Take a look outside with live cam, 62 degrees at 537. It's been warm the last couple of days, and Mike says that's going to be the trend for the rest of the week. He'll have our forecast when we come back. This morning, we are getting much closer to March, which means people are starting to think about spring break travel plans now. But with the impact of inflation, how do you know you're getting the best deal out there? Good question. ABC's Alexis Christophorus tells us what you need to know before you book. Travelers are back in full force. The TSA bracing for crowded airports, expecting more passengers this spring break than before the pandemic. Strong demand has certainly led to higher prices than we saw in 2020 and 2021. According to online booking site Hopper, round trip domestic fares now averaging $264, up 20% from a year ago and up 5% from pre pandemic levels. But that doesn't mean it's too late to lock in a deal. Scott Kyes from the travel site Going says in the past two weeks, he's found deals like $197 round trip from LA to Hawaii, $483 from Chicago to Paris, and $650 from San Francisco go to Fiji. Rather than choosing the destination you want to go to and then hoping and praying that a cheap flight pops up, see where are there cheap flights available over that spring break week. So instead of flying New York to Miami for $500, consider visiting Charleston for less than half that. After peaking in May, airfares have actually come down in five of the past eight months. And Kai says there's reason to believe they'll continue to fall especially as airlines are able to add more flights, more capacity, more supply to the schedule, which is going to bring down fares. But that doesn't mean summer travel will be on sale. Experts say the later you wait to book, the more you'll pay. And that was Alexis Christophorus reporting right now, 541, 62 degrees. Up next, if you're in the market for a used car, prices are rising again. How much has gone up in the last two weeks? 544, let's get to some late breaking news we're tracking this morning. A house fire on San Antonio's east side. Our Katrina Weber is live at the scene. Uh, good morning, Katrina. So where exactly are you? Good morning. Uh, this is the 400 block of Hammond, not far from I-10 and Rigsby. And this house right here behind me is the one that's been uh, the focus of the firefighters' attention. They got called here a little bit before 4.30 this morning. They say they found actually two separate fires on this house. One was on the back of the house, the other on the side. Uh, firefighters didn't know if it started inside or outside, but they say it definitely did get inside the home all the way up to the second floor of this. They say there's significant damage inside. Now, there was no one inside the house when the fire broke out. Firefighters say it looks like there might have been some renovation work going on. 
So they are wondering exactly how this fire started with no one living here at the moment. And uh, again, two separate fires that started. They're going to leave that to arson investigators to try to take a look around and figure out exactly how it started. But for now, they say that at least something here does look a bit suspicious because again, two separate fires on this one house. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you very much. A man's in the hospital this morning after a shooting on the city's far north side near the Rim Shopping Center. This happened just before 10 last night at the Berkshire Apartments on Worth Parkway. San Antonio police say the victim was visiting his ex-girlfriend. When leaving the complex, officers say the father of the ex-girlfriend's child shot at the victim six times with an AK-47. The victim was hit twice and is expected to be okay. Police are still searching for the suspect. A man, is, a man is in the hospital after being shot on the city's west side. This happened around 3 this morning. San Antonio police say the man was shot in the stomach near Frio City Road in Zarzamora. He was seen by someone driving by and managed to get back into his car while that person looked for a police officer to flag down. The victim was taken to University Hospital with a life-threatening injury. Police were not able to get any information on that suspect. Approaching 547. Steven, I know it's been a big morning for you with that fatal crash out on Loop 410. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still seeing that back to back traffic out there, Sarah. So let's get a wider look to see uh, really the conditions. And unfortunately, they have not changed much. You can see right from that shot at Transguide. Uh, again, things have pretty much remained the same out there. But now that we're getting closer to 6 a.m., we're likely going to see more of a buildup out there. Now, remember, this is that deadly crash involving a pedestrian that crossed the highway earlier this morning. Now, according to police, the driver did stop to render aid, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, the news was pretty grim out there. We are still seeing a backup due to the investigation that's still taking place. So we're going to have to keep a very close eye on this throughout the morning. But let's take a look at the map because what we have seen is just that maintaining of the steady uh, red and yellow that we are seeing build up on the screen. Now traffic moving a little bit more freely at 19 miles per hour, but now we're starting to see that backup stretch a little bit past Vance Jackson. However, I was talking to our friends at Transguide. It is still early enough to where you can exit Vance Jackson Road if you're trying to get to Jackson Keller. Quick solution there, turn left right at Saxon, then left at West Avenue, and you'll hit Jackson Keller that way. But we've outlined that for you in the blue, and you can see it right there on the map. So just follow that direction. Uh, but if not, pack your patience, because it's likely that we're going to see that investigation take place up until at least 6 a.m. So unclear when it will wrap up, but we can expect it to last a little longer. Wide view of the map really doesn't show anything else going on this early in the morning, and that's some good news. Uh, we are tracking other areas. Uh, it does look like there are a few stalls that are being reported, but it doesn't really seem to be impacting the majority of the traffic still very early in the morning. So let's get a quick look around town. 35 at Laredo doesn't look too bad, and we're really just seeing a normal commute. Everywhere else is uh, pretty quiet, and we can expect hopefully that traffic to stay that same because it is President's Day. So a lot of folks off, but Mike pointed this out earlier. It is pretty surprising to see a lot of folks out there this early in the morning along 410, and that just shows you how bad uh, it could get out there. Very easily. Yeah. You never realize just how many cars travel mm -hmm. on those, those roads. Until so. we get a log jam like that, even yeah. on a holiday. Yeah. Right. All right. It was a gorgeous weekend. We had a few extra clouds hanging around here on Saturday after that really chilly start. Yesterday was just spectacular. And here's a nice shot. The duck's flying home for dinner. Boy, that's pretty. It almost looks like fall there in the background in that picture with some of those trees. Thank you very much for the, uh, the KSAT Connect picture. All right. We are seeing plenty of clouds hanging around here this morning. Temperatures are way, way above normal. Normal is mid 40s right now, so we've got low 50s and low to mid 60s around much of the area. We're still not seeing any fog. We're just kind of keeping a lookout for this. There is some here along the coastal plain, but we just got to watch out. There was a little bit earlier this morning around Gonzales, around Seguin, but nothing being reported as of right now. Uh, if there is some fog and that 10% is just to take into account if there is a little bit of mist associated with some of that fog. So that's the only reason that's in there. Otherwise, we'll see some sunshine trying to squeeze through by noon. Still plenty of clouds hanging around here and then a bit more in the way of sunshine. And that's going to heat us up to 78 degrees. All right, as far as and wow, something's not showing up for me right there. I'll just jump ahead to this graphic and we've got this low, which is parked off the coast of Baja. And so what that's going to be doing is not much. It's just kind of sitting out there and that's pumping in, first of all, all this moisture. So that's what's keeping a lot of these mid high clouds hanging around here over the next 
well, at least about week. We will see more sunshine uh, kind of mixed in here in the afternoons over the next couple of days. That's only going to help to uh, heat things up. And that is going to, again, just sort of sit out there through tomorrow, through midweek, and then sort of be absorbed by the upper level winds. Now, this trough is trying to develop out here to the west of us, and it's not what you'd like to see is this thing parked about right here over Missouri, and that would give us some nice February kind of weather. But in this situation, it's just going to we're on the front side of it, so it's just going to continue to pump in warm and moist air around here, and that's going to keep the clouds around. There is a, a dry front that's going to move on through here. Notice with this configuration, you're not getting any cold air with it. This is going to be Tuesday into Wednesday. It will then allow temperatures to really heat up on Wednesday, and then we will drop down somewhat, but still be on the above normal side. And that's going to be the case in through the rest of the week. Another low is going to kind of park off there off the coast of California and pretty much continue with this same weather all the way through the, uh, the weekend. So we're not going to see any significant changes other than the fact we are going to have temperatures way above normal. 70 at noon, mostly cloudy skies, partly cloudy later on today, 78 for a high temperature. Tomorrow it gets even warmer in the afternoon up to the mid 80s. Again, that front moves through here. But it's merely a dry line and again, drier air heats up a lot more easily than moist air does. And so that's going to help to heat us up on Wednesday, going for upper 80s here in town, a lot of 90s, especially along the Rio Grande Valley and we will drop down. Yeah, not be as hot, but still way above normal by a good 10 to 15 degrees all the way through the weekend. And I know we were talking about spring projects, starting them, mm -hmm. people getting that itch. It's going to be a week for it. I mean, if you want to get outside yeah. and, you know, do a little planting, something like that, perfect weather for it. Just be prepared for the spring. Spring's not completely <coughs> here yeah. yet. No, it's, <laughs> you never know with fall, with yeah, February and March, so. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 552, 62 degrees. We're going to take a look one more time at TransGuide. This is 410 at Jackson Keller. That crash really happening at Loop 410 Northwest Military. It was a deadly crash involving a pedestrian in those lanes, causing a big backup on this President's Day. Stephen is on this, on this crash. He'll have the latest when we come back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're following the latest on that breaking news. President Biden's surprise trip to Ukraine, nearly one year since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion. Our team is both live in Ukraine and where the president is heading next. And then the latest on the toxic train derailment in Ohio. FEMA is now on the ground. We'll have some details from there. And then we've got Dwayne The Rock Johnson and the winner of the 2023 Daytona 500, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., plus Ant-Man and Creed star Jonathan Majors, all of them joining us right here on GMA. In your business headlines this morning, two lawmakers on the West Coast want Washington State and local governments to bring back employees who were fired because they didn't get vaccinated. Two state reps have introduced bills that would create hiring preferences for bringing back state workers that were fired. The bills would also give those workers a chance to catch up contributions to the state retirement plan. No word yet if or when the bills could actually come up for a vote there in Washington state. Well, if you're in the market for a used car, listen up. Prices are on the rise again. New numbers show prices jumped 4% just in the last two weeks. It's an unusually large spike in such a short period of time. Jump also caught industry insiders by surprise. A shortage of new car inventory helped drive both new and used car prices to record levels earlier last year. The busy selling season for used cars is only months away. And it's tied to when potential buyers get their tax refunds. Now dealers are scrambling to rebuild inventories, resulting in higher prices for those pre-owned cars. Well, ahead in the next hour, GMSA San Antonio's Ready to Work program has seen an influx of people joining. We'll hear from one of the participants and what he says makes this whole program worth it. Plus more San Antonio Brahma's highlights with the kickoff of the XFL season. It doesn't just impact the coaches and players, how it also impacts fans and businesses around the Alamo City. Items being recalled hit an all-time high last year at 6. We'll tell you what that means for consumers and how you can find out if any of those items are in your house right now. And Transguide, if your travels take you on 410 eastbound headed towards, say, North Star Mall area or even San Antonio International Airport, we've seen this for quite a while now. Stacking due to a fatality incident earlier, we'll have more coming up at the top of the hour.